We will have the second presentation from the online. Uh, Isam, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Go ahead and share your presentation, please. Okay, Isam will be presenting our second paper in this session, which is on uh, network uh, placement of the knapsack based optimization algorithm for virtual network uh, placement and chaining problem. So he is from France, right? And then you know. Yeah. So let's welcome Isam. Uh, Sam, we cannot see your. We can okay. just, just a second. Yeah, okay. Like okay. to share your video, uh, please do so. Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Ekhlef Aysam. I'm a PhD student at uh, Sorbonne Paris Nord University, and I will present to you our paper titled "Knapsack Based Optimization Algorithm for VNF Placement and Chaining Problem." The plan of the presentation is as follow. Okay, so uh, the plan of the presentation is as follow. We start by introducing the generic problem and give some definitions uh, of the NFVSD and SFC. Then I will give you a scenario that, that, that is useful to understand the problem. After, after that, I will present a variant of uh, the problem, the VNF PC with sufficient uh, links capacity of the virtual network, where uh, the links capacity of the virtual network are high comparatively to the traffic demand. Then I will show you the exact ILP solution to the problem and describe our genetic algorithm based proposal to solve efficiently and uh, quickly the problem. Results validating our proposal are presented before uh, concluding this presentation. What is NFV? NFV is a program that replaces hardware function with software virtual network function called VNF running as virtual machines. The softwareization of hardware that comes with virtualization in general will allow a better use of network resources by sharing them and reduce the capex and opex costs. Thus, it will be possible to build net network services by simple expression of need. Network serv service will then be built by placing and chaining network function chain. This network function chain forms a, an SFC service function chain. This chain of network function aiming at realizing and supporting a network service, given the limited capacities of uh, the servers, their location, different costs for the servers and the links, etc. We will have to determine the best path that traverses the, the servers on which we run the VNF. Uh, the path also determines the VNF chaining and thus the flow route. To facilitate understanding, I have prepared a simple scenario to explain the general, general context of the problem. We assume here that we have a customer on the right, a supplier on the left, or a provider on the left, and its infrastructure composed of seven uh, servers. Each server has a limited capacity and a deployment cost of use. Links also have cost and limited resources. So let's consider the scenario where the client on the right want to create a specific service, for example, a video content distribution service specific to a certain population. The server, this service will be carried out using three network functions. Have the VNF authentication, VNF invoicing, and the VNF transcoding. The client requests the creation of the service by sending a request to the provider specifying in particular the chaining of these three functions. And now it's, it's up to the provider to carry out the chaining by placing uh, the requested the tree requested uh, function as well as possible to provide the servers. As a result, it is necessary to place these three functions, VNF authentication, invoicing, and transcoding on the nodes capable, capable of hosting them by optimizing the cost of allo allocating link, links and servers. After modeling this problem by a linear program that takes the, the NFE infrastructure data as, uh, and the, the service function chains, uh, chain, chains data as input and find the optimal placement and chaining, we showed that this problem correspond to a mo the multiple uh, knapsack problem when the capacity of the links are sufficient and the links costs are negligible composite uh, compared to the allocation costs of the nodes. As we see in this figure, the VNF of the service function chain are considered as 
object to be in the knapsacks and then and the servers of the, the servers of the infrastructure are considered as knapsack. So we naturally seeks here to minimize the total cost of allocating VNF, which is equivalent to maximizing the, the maximizing the, the negative profit of allocating the object in the multiple knapsack problem. Uh, knowing the efficiency of the genetic algorithm in solving almost all, all the variant of the knapsack problem, we have proposed here to use, to use them to solve not only the multiple knapsack problem, but also the instances of the VNF placement and chaining uh, problem with non-negligible costs. As we know, the genetic algorithm should be designed and efficiently, efficiently parameterized to effectively solve our, uh, our problem. For this aim, we propose the following. So the initial population is generated with the use of two procedures, random, which consists in random selection of servers that are used to support the VNF, and uh, secondly, the shortest path based VNF placement in which we, the VNF are placed along shortest path connecting the source to a neighbor of uh, the destination. The individuals are evaluated with the use of a fitness function that correspond for uh, the feasible solutions to the inverse of the cost, uh, the cost function for non-feasible solution, the costs are multiplied by uh, a penalty uh, that correspond to 10 power, the, the number of time the constraints uh, are violated when starting by placing the VNF close to the source. For coding, as you can see, we use the coding with natural numbers representing the indexes of servers. For example, here we have VNF tree uh, that will be placed in the server one VNF4 on server 5, etc. In our proposal, the parent as, are selected according to a, a roulette wheel selection where the probability of choosing an individual for breeding of the next generation is proportional to, the, to its fitness. For children generation, we used two, the two-point crossover where the two points are randomly selected amongst the gen. Finally, in mutation, we randomly choose a gen, for example, here nine, then we randomly replace the uh, index of the server S with another server S prime, drawn randomly from a list of servers. Now, concerning the selection of the next population, we use two different procedures that I explained in the next slide. We compared four genetic algorithms with the CSP and the ES. CSP corresponds to the constrained short path between the source and the destination. With this approach, a shortest path of exactly X links and verifying the constraint is determined and, and used to uh, deduce the VNF placement and chaining. ES, which correspond to the exhaustive research, allow the de determination of exact solution. In our simulation, we used four genetic algorithm variants, GIRB with random generation of the initial population and selection of the next generation by choosing the best individuals amongst children and parents. Then we have the GIRT with random generation of the initial population and selection of the next generation by making two to two tournament between the, an individual belonging to a different parent and an individual belonging to the children. The GICT, which is identical to the GIRT, but the initial population consists of shortest constrained path to the destination numbers. The GACB uh, identical to the GARB, but the initial population can consist of shortest constrained path to the destination neighbors. Performance comparisons with ES and CSP algorithm uh, demonstrate the, the, the effectiveness of our algorithm in optimizing the allocation costs and increasing, increasing the ratio of accepted, uh, accepted requests. Results also show that the acceptance rate of the genetic algorithm is almost say the same at, uh, as that of the, the ES when we use CSP or others. The genetic algorithm do not decrease the acceptance rate, especially when we use the GARB or others. GAR effect, uh, genetic algorithms are effective when uh, they are well designed and configured. So in this presentation, uh, we studied a variant of the VNF placement and chaining problem in which we assumed links with sufficient capacity after showing the similarity between the studied problem and the multiple knapsack problem. 
We proposed efficient genetics algorithm-based heuristic to solve our problem. Simulation results show that the genetic algorithm determines a solution close to the optimal one with a very slight reduction of the acceptance rate. Thank you for your attention. Questions over Zoom? Over Zoom now? How about the audience here? Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. So uh, I have just more question regarding the um, scalability of your work. Did you uh, yeah. study the uh, scalability in terms of number of uh, servers in terms of VNF, uh, VNF actions, et cetera? Yeah. Because here, I think you considered at the uh, 50 and about 100 no. nodes, but about- For the uh, first, okay. uh, for the first simulations, so we used a network with 30 nodes. And then we increase the number to 100 nodes. Okay. The first one we, we use the VNF uh, with six uh, with two to six nodes in a, a network or composed of 30 nodes. Then we increase the number to 30 nodes uh, with the VNF of the fixed number of VNF six. And then we use the VNF side in the range of 10 to 20 VNF function. Uh, in a network composed of 100 nodes. Okay. Any questions? Another question? I do have a quick question. Like, since you use genetic algorithms, like, and have you measured the like the running time? And mm -hmm. yeah. And no, but we, we didn't. No, we didn't really put it on the paper. So. Yeah, but for, like, you, for example, you, yeah. for example, for the infrastructure composed of 100 nodes, it took like. A, Two days. Two days, okay. Yeah, it looks like two days, yeah. For the 100 nodes infrastructure, but for the others, no, really like six so, to eight hours. Yeah, that's the drawback of the genetic algorithm. So I was gonna ask, uh, do you have plans to look at that to, in the extensions? Yes, we will try to, uh, to study the generic version. So the, the complete version of the problem and we in consideration also the links capacity constraints. Okay. Question, one more question. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, work. Uh, so I had a question about the, uh, um, the optimal problem design. So it seemed, if you can go back to your optimization problem, it seemed that you were uh, basically aggregating multiple factors like bandwidth and so on. Uh, did mm -hmm. you consider different before you presented the genetic approach? Yeah. So. Um, when you're looking at that, did you consider, you know, different weights to these um, challenges, like say bandwidth, uh, yeah, different types of constraints? Yeah, in the ILP, yeah, we took all these, uh, and uh, let's we say, this constraints capacity in consideration, the links, the nodes, uh, we have two. So for the links and for the for for the nodes capacity, and even for the nodes, we have many types of capacity in store like in storage uh, calculation we have many many types of uh, resources do they all have different weights or the same weight yeah uh, yeah exactly like, yeah they have they have different weights and these are managed by the network operator then they decide which one of these considerations are most important mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I guess that leads me to the second question. Um, so you chose to solve, you, obviously you, you presented the relaxation, but then you chose to solve it using a genetic approach to try to, you know, find a reasonable uh, polynomial time solution. So why mm -hmm. a genetic approach? I mean, this problem has been, you know, beaten to death in different ways across the literature. Why did you choose a genetic approach and what was the baseline for comparisons? Because the genetic, uh, uh, genetic approach are really effective for the multiple knapsack problem. So that's why that's why we used them. Sure. So I guess my question is, does it really need to be represented as a knapsack problem, given that, that no, 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 not really. Assignments, right? So, no, no. So no, taking it up really. to a knapsack and then reducing it to, and trying to find a GA approach, is one way of doing things. I'm just asking why this this specific path and what others did you consider when you're you this, know, this solving? Is, this, is, 
this is the starting pad so we eliminated the links constraint to like to make it easy to solve this is the first the first path and then we, we will try to solve the generic problems we will add the links constraint constraint and try to solve it using the, the multi constraint routing problem okay thank you very much thank you thank you any more questions so i think with that we just thank the speaker again so we had two papers in the session and uh, there is a voting is going on uh, among the sc and oc members so the award will be uh, announced tomorrow's session uh, in the afternoon uh, then we'll have now a coffee break then we'll be studying the symposium sessions symposium papers at 10 30. thank you